computer, man. A merchant ship is on its way to Rome. It is loaded to the brim with treasure. Just past Crete, it gets into a heavy storm. The 300 tons of cargo is yeah, yeah. very heavy, possibly too heavy. The ship sinks. History became legend, legend became myth, and for over 2,000 years, the ship passed out of all knowledge. Perhaps it would have been forgotten forever, swallowed by the sea like so many ships before it. That was until a sponge diver from a small town of Simi makes a dive into the ocean. On the sea floor, he discovers a bronze hand sticking out of the mud, heavily corroded, but still recognizable. He reports his findings to his captain. With the help of the Greek government, the crew recovers what must have been a shipwreck. Ancient bronze and marble statues. Do they have a computer? Bases. It's the largest collection of Greek artifacts ever found. They take everything to Athens. Museum staff are piecing together the artifacts. Meanwhile, this corroded lump of bronze still sits there, unnoticed. Over the course of the next few months, it dries up and cracks open. The shattered ah. rock reveals something very strange. A large wheel, engraved letters, and a number of smaller gears. It looks like an ancient machine. A sophisticated device that simply should not exist, with a mechanism over a thousand years ahead of its time. Wait, what? For over a century, archaeologists, engineers, and physicists from all over the world will try to solve the riddle of the world's first computer. Wait, 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 so they just found a, a brick, a uh, big a chunk of bronze, it cracked open, and inside the egg, it, it, there was a, there was a little, the, the world's first computer? I want to know how they came to that conclusion. This video is largely based on the fantastic book, Decoding the Heavens, by Joe Marchant. Link in the description. Okay. Greek archaeologist Valerio Stice is the first person to examine the strange objects. The many traces of gears lead him to believe that this must be some kind of ancient clock. But mechanical clocks were not invented until the Renaissance, 1,400 years later. So they were just a... of toot wheels. No gears from antiquity has ever been found before. So it was just advanced for its time, right? So so more more aliens yeah at least until now Stai soon realizes that he needs the expertise of others he invites john savornos and adolf wilhelm both experts in ancient text they decipher the scribblings as ancient greek letters another scientist named pericles rhodiatus studies the inscriptions and suggests that they must be operating instructions this word in particular stands out to him it's an old and unusual word for the zodiac scale a scale dividing the year in 12 zodiac constellations. Rhodiatus and Savornos conclude that the device must be an astrolabe, an ancient calculator to measure the position of stars and planets. Calculator? Astrolabes don't need gears. Maybe this strange astrolabe was somehow able to determine the position of stars mechanically. So is it a clock or a computer? Or a calendar? In the following years, the fragments are carefully cleaned. Albert Rem, an expert from ancient languages from Germany, travels to Athens to inspect the device. He discovers uh -huh. another word previously hidden. An ancient Egyptian month in Greek letters. What if, Rem argues, this machine is able to simulate the movement of celestial objects throughout the year? Shortly after his discovery, work on the Antithikira mechanism stalls. Years pass without any new major breakthroughs. Two world wars hamper the excitement. Okay. The machine survives at the bottom of some storeroom crates, in danger of being forgotten again. Computer technology has come a long way. Today, yeah. we don't just study stars or track time mechanically. We can now access and control our most powerful tools from halfway across the world. This is possible because of services oh, like our sponsor, AnyDesk. AnyDesk is a free, lightning-fast tool 
that lets you access all of your devices remotely. Whether you're making complex 3D animations on your laptop from the coast of Greece, or just helping a family member troubleshoot tech issues, AnyDesk is here to help with reliable and secure connections, even in low bandwidth situations. The clean interface makes AnyDesk a breeze for anyone to use. It's available for all platforms, from your laptop into your phone, all the way to your grandmother's Windows XP machine. Okay. If the Antithecura mechanism would have had an internet connection, maybe it could have run AnyDesk as well. If you want to check out what AnyDesk has to offer, go to anydesk.com fern and try it for free. Isn't this what the scammers use to, like, take your credit card and whatnot, your bank information? They scam you out of buying gift cards. Yeah, they use AnyDesk. Fast forward to 1953, a, remote desktop. a new generation yeah. of divers is in the waters near Antithecura. <laughs> yeah. Among them, Jacques Cousteau, filmmaker and pioneer. Thanks to him, diving gear went from this to this. Divers can go much deeper now. Yeah, there are he's many a pioneer, stories of man. treasures that fell over the cliff beneath the wreck site. They were out and of reach for the sponge divers back then, but not for Cousteau and his crew. After days of searching, they find something buried under a thick layer of sand. More! The sunken ship's hole, almost perfectly preserved. Ooh. But the crew does not have the necessary equipment to unearth it. They return two decades later, with better gear and a camera. The crew finds more treasure, but no new parts from the mechanism. Luckily, science itself is developing rapidly. Derek Price, a historian from the UK, uses newly developed X-ray technology to scan the existing fragments. He finds more gears and is able to build the first model of the Antithecura mechanism. He calls it a calendar computer. But his model isn't very accurate. For it to work, Price had to change the number of teeth on the gears despite his x-ray images showing otherwise. The researchers Michael Wright and uh -huh. Alan Bromley see that Price clearly made some mistakes, so they decide to solve the mechanism themselves. The so it's a computer calendar. How does that... How does that make sense? For, for something that was like, what? When, when did this start? Uh, 1902? The two fly to Athens. For a month, they re-examine, measure, and photograph the 82 remaining pieces of the device. But after 2,000 years, and likely passing through as many hands, the inevitable happens. Oh my god. The x-ray was the right call, after all. The two learn of a relatively new technique called tomography. It basically works by taking multiple slices of pictures from an object and putting them together afterwards. They take a total of 700 images. With them, they can have a clearer look at the inside. After years of work, Wright and Bromley are this close to unraveling the mystery. But suddenly, Bromley cuts ties with Wright. Why? He Wright for his work, takes the images, and leaves. A few years later, Bromley is diagnosed with cancer. It's like a puzzle. On his deathbed, he confesses to Wright. He alone wanted to be known for solving the Antithecura mechanism. Oh my god. But he failed. In the end, Bromley hands over his 3D scans to Wright. Wright had already designed a prototype in 2002, but with these images, he would be finally able to solve the device. Or so he thought. Tony Freeth, a mathematician and filmmaker, gathers a group of researchers under the Antithecura Mechanism Research Project. The group scans and measures the fragments yet again, this time with even better and newer technology. The quality of their images is astonishing. Even the smallest inscriptions hidden deep within the stone are now readable in sharp detail. Wow. They regularly publish new papers of the device. There are a few more expeditions to the shipwreck with drastically changed diving gear. But again, yeah, yeah, no one yeah, can yeah. find new pieces of the mechanism on the seabed. In 2021, Freeth and the others are finally able to put together all the pieces of the puzzle. They are able to combine all the evidence of the last century in one machine. We finally get to see what it is. The mystery of the world's oldest computer is finally solved. So, what does it do? Huh? A computer is a device that can store and process information. Any device that is able to solve math equations and show you the result can therefore technically be considered a computer. Right, right. There are two types, digital computers, like the phone you're watching this video on, and analog. 
I'm not watching on a phone, but yeah, I get your point. Ones. So you have this task, eight times two. Digital computers work with ones and zeros. To solve the task, it first needs to translate the numbers in binary, one zero 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 times zero zero one zero. Yep. One way to multiply the numbers would just be to multiply the individual numbers one by one and add the individual results, just like in school. Translate the number back to decimal and yep. there's your result. But there is also another way. The same task can be represented by an analog computer with gears. This can be translated into one gear with eight teeth and a larger one with 16. Each time you turn the larger gear once, the smaller one turns twice. Mathematically speaking, your input has been multiplied by two. This is basically what clocks do, transforming seconds into minutes and minutes into hours. Uh, my brain! This is also what the Antithakira mechanism does, only that it's much more complex. The device originally sat in this wooden box. It had a handle on the side to control the complex internal mechanism. These gears move a series of pointers at the front and back. The ancient Greeks believed the Earth was at the center of the universe. Uh -huh. That's why Earth sits right in the middle. Around it orbits the moon, as well as the sun and the five planets that were known at the time. There are also rings for the Egyptian months and dates with its respective zodiac. Additionally, the front so it's is a calendar with step-by-step -step instructions on how to use it. The back shows two spiral rings with large pointers in the middle. The upper one shows the 19-year metonic cycle. It's the basis for many ancient calendars. Inside these rings is a smaller scale showing the four-year cycle of the Olympic Games. The lower ring is an eclipse predictor that, well, predicts eclipses. The Antithakira mechanism is a complex simulation of the cosmos. Bro, bro like, who, who is the genius behind this? Like, uh, like what, what were they doing? What were they doing? Uh, like an apple fell from a tree and hit him on the head? And then he's like, calendar. Pick any day. The machine shows you where the moon stood, which star constellation was rising, or when the next eclipse was coming. All this in a wooden case as large as a book. But wait, like, how would they know? How would it know when to start? Like, like, how would it have known the exact moment to, like, resume? Perhaps it was used by astronomers or by teachers. But one common theory suggests otherwise. It most likely wasn't a tool. It was probably a luxury toy. A very impressive and also very expensive piece of tech for anyone who could okay. afford it. Some suggest it might have been used to cast horoscopes. The ancient Greeks, like strangely many people today, believed in astrology. The idea that the position of the stars and planets at your birth oh. have an influence on your life. Say so you want to know what Mercury was doing when you were born? No! Today, you just Google it. In ancient Greece, you need an astronomer at the time of your birth to write down the exact constellations. Otherwise, this information would be lost. With the Antithakira mechanism, you could set it to your birthday, only to realize that Mercury was in f***ing retrograde. Okay. Over 2,000 years ago, some wealthy owner took the device with him on a trip to Rome. But he never reached his It would his be goal. his last. So would it have been the, the world's first? The mechanism is a technological masterpiece that no one would have thought possible at the time. There is a slight catch, however. The device actually sucked. It wasn't yeah. very accurate. Ancient Greeks didn't have the scientific tools to measure the universe like we do. Right. They mostly looked up at the sky for a very long time, <laughs> wrote down what they saw, and developed theories about the universe. When you look up at Mercury long enough, you realize something very strange. At first, Mercury becomes slower and slower, <laughs> until suddenly it changes direction and seems to move backwards. By the way, this is actually what people are talking about when they say Mercury is in retrograde, which is a bad sign, apparently. Or whatever. I love the fact that he added or whatever. Okay, that makes me happy. Like, bro, who believes in this voodoo? In fact, every planet has these little loops called epicycles. If you write it all down, this is what the geocentric universe looks like. Ooh. Well, that's so Thanks cool. To Copernicus, we know that the universe is heliocentric. These epicycles are only an optical illusion. <laughs> this is what the two models look like side by side. Translating the geocentric model into the right gears is an incredibly difficult task. Sure, you can calculate it, but the model is very prone to error. 
But like way back then, way back then, dude, this has to be impossible. Like someone was, someone was way too advanced for their time. Every gear needs to accurately simulate the different speeds of the planets during these epicycles, and even the apparent retrograde motion. This is why the inside of the Antithicara mechanism is so mind-bogglingly complex. Building a machine like this without modern technology also adds mechanical errors. Yeah. Ultimately, the but it's still insane. Is off by about one whole zodiac. Considering the age of the machine, that is, of course, still incredibly impressive. Only, only like that small amount of error, dude. That's insanely mechanical. Like, it, dude, this guy was gifted. Gifted with big brain. Especially for only sitting there and staring at stars forever. For a long time, historians believed that the ancient Greeks were talented, but not very practically minded. Philosophy, yes. Pretty sculptures, sure. But building a space computer out of gears, absolutely impossible. But they somehow did. The Antithicara mechanism Blows my is mind. so unbelievable that some people believe it actually came from aliens yeah. and was used by them to navigate the stars. For others, it is an ancient time machine and plot device in a Hollywood movie. Fact is, the Antithicara mechanism is real, and it most likely wasn't even the first of its kind. Several ancient yeah, there had to it yeah, there had to have been prototypes, right? Like, uh, like going over, and I wonder, I wonder, like, what the prototypes look like. If that's the final product, yeah, but like everything's always aliens, bro. Pyramids, aliens, insane mechanical calendar clock, aliens. Device designed by Archimedes. <laughs> Come a on, sphere bro. that shows the motion of the sun, moon, and planets around the Earth. But it was lost. The bronze inside the machinery melted into coins. In a weird sense, we might be lucky that the merchant ship sank during that storm, two thousand right. years ago. We would have never found out, man. It's crazy. It's crazy how all this like works and comes around. How how a wreck can and it took them how long? How long to do? Started in nineteen oh two, and then we get we get to what? What was the last year? Was it like two thousand eleven? When was it? It was like 2011, right? 2011, bro. 1902 to 2011. Wow.